welcome to these are the days of glory this week what i'm saying i say recap revive relieve replay Mm. that's what we are doing and uh, it's a revival time these are the days of glory you are partaking of things happen long time ago i think it was 2016 when there was fire fire. when i say fire i mean fire full of fire and you are going to be blessed today gukulumus bariwami mais bari ah bishop corporate world i business i found this my ceo my executive hey and uh, the man of god is down to earth down to earth he has planted many churches and he has started a school life on this corner about to the academy where he teaches and produce among leaders the academy and a business oh my god this man of god Ratsa, ratsa, ratsi. You are, you are a great inspiration in the body of Christ, Bishop Nati Zondige, and we love you so much, man of God, for every contribution that you have contributed, even tonight. Yo, on that day, you shook me, and I'm telling you, I'm not the same person that I used to be after you spoke about the wisdom to bring solution, the wisdom to bring change, the wisdom to lead, the wisdom to multiply what God has given you, the wisdom. My God, even when manjinje, I'm intrigued. In right now, I'm feeling some illumination, revelation. Something glorious, something wonderful, something unprecedented is happening right now. Yeah, we need this wisdom. And my message this season and in this new era, my message is obvious. It's wisdom. And we have entered a new era, a era of Solomon. 2021 is going to be the year of a new era. You see, when we're talking about a new era, and this is a year of a new era, this is it wisdom. We understand, Leonto, because we want Sophia. We want this thing so that we can be able to know what God has given us. Because there are so many people who don't know what God has given them. He has given them the gift, the anointing, the power, the grace, and the fruits of the spirit, the money, the fame, the position. And Amani, they don't understand what does that mean. How must they use it? They don't know how to manage what God has given them. So I'm just touched. And Bishop Natizon is going to speak to us and I'm telling you, your life will never be the same again. Let me I challenge you a little bit, Church of God. Church of God, I know when we come to church, we have come to be... We want to be high. Just to be high, high, high. Um, don't I feel no good about high? We have a pair of matracks, so that's how we're high. So as people is cut so good about to be feel no good about high. Go more, yeah. Then we go high and wondering because that's what we need. We need people like Josh. Excuse me. People like Joseph who are going to challenge, who are going to contribute in our government, who are going to help, who are going to bring change. We are people about pointers, point to government, point about fundis, point about holy, point about cancela, point about business, point about young people. When we are going to be a change, when we are going to bring a solution, when we are going to bring what the, the country needs, we need to be the light, we need to be the salt of this earth. I hope you will be changed by this message. It was preached a while ago, maybe 2016 and uh, normal 2015. And I want to tell you something. You, your life, you, we need to change this world. Before I die, before I go home to be with Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, I want to do something in this world. Even as I'm using this media, social media, this platform to influence you, to speak to you, to touch your life, it's because... I've got something burning within me. I don't want to die. Uh, when I, uh, in Sanduk Sindeso, 
there was a poem something burning within me something is in his mind is is like fire in my bones it says i want to die empty if i die i want to die empty if you just sing a but when i die i want to die empty everything i've got everything kunenjumayelo kunencwadi kuna ma film langa phakathi kwami kuna ma teachings kuna ikole kuna mava kuna ma university alanga pha kuna into eyiningi eyigculela kumina ngaphakathi you understand kuna ma building aqulela kumina kuna ma ideas abelela aqulela kumina ngaphakathi kuna abantu engizoba mentorisha kuna abantu engizoba coach kuna abantu engizoba uplift kuna abantu engizoba inspiration kuna abantu engizoba vuselela it's within you it's burning it's burning like fire it's consuming that's why i'm doing all these things because I want to change you. I want to challenge you. I want us to be better. Bishop Natizon is going to inspire us, revive us, and shake us a bit so that we'll go to another level. Wow! I love this man. I know you're going to be blessed. I I the last time I was here I really preached. And I preached powerfully. And I know that. Ngashumayela ngamandla makhulu kabe. Albonka Malengosi. And I have a word for you today. Albonka Malengosi. I do carry with me a very strong teaching heart. And I want to invite you to get ready, take notes where you can. Make sure you learn as much as you can. This is an apostolic house. This church is an apostolic house with a very strong prophetic grace. And you know, an apostolic house, one of the marks of an apostolic house is that it's the house that builds. It's a house that impacts its community. It's a house that has a long-term view. Albon Kamalengos. And that's what I sense in this house. Amen. Because of that, we just have to lay, uh, to build brick by brick, line by line, precept by precept, to make sure that is rooted. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is also a house of winners. I want to. We want to go to meet Mom Chela into I E Mom Chela. Me and Raza Chela go to Moose. Mom Chela to Moose. Hello, thank you. Uksa, my dear. No. Album Kamale Kosi. Mom Chela go to Moose. I call as a Makelan. I'm about to call my name Makelan. I'm telling you, this is a church, a house of winners. Albon Kamalekos. This is a house of winners. I'm telling you the grace that is in this house. I was telling your parents earlier, and I was telling them one of the things I like about them is that they are very bold. You are you are raised by a very bold leadership. Albon Kamalekos. Amen, Basalwan. And the thing. The thing is this, when you are led by strong, courageous, bold leaders, you can't help it but follow. It just rubs on you. And that's why men and women who are really raised in this house, one of the signs you'll see is that they will be marked by boldness. Amen, Basalwan. This, yeah, that's one of the things you will notice about people who are brought up in this church, is that they will not be cowards. Fear is not part of the chemistry of this church. Amen. 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 And so you are a house of winners and pioneers. That's the grace that's in this house. That's what we are declaring over you. Amen. Amen. That's what you are declaring over you. Amen, Basalwan. You may be going through um, some setbacks right now, but you are a winner. In Jesus' name. 
And I want you to receive it for yourself and say, I am a winner. I am a winner. Amen. Amen. These are some of the signs, and I'm going to talk to you about winners. Because that's the grace that's in this house. And we are building from what God is building through the apostle. The apostles that lead you. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, I just want to thank you and give you glory. People will say things about you. You know, pastors will prophesy over your life. Prophets will speak things about you. It has happened to me many times, Apostle, where I'll be in a meeting and God will speak a word about me through someone, either people who are my mentors or people who are just strangers. Of course, saying things, Besho Isinto, which my spirit approve. And very powerful things about me. I've, I have a long list of prophetic words over my life. It was so with Jesus. Uchesu, people said many things about him hundreds of years before he was born. Prophet, prophesied about him. Isaiah said things about Jesus. Jeremiah said things about Jesus. Even when Jesus arrived, John the Baptist said something about him. You know, Ucho Anuti Lozayo, ye non papatisa ngomlil, mina papasa ngamans, ye non papasa ngomlil, ati ang fanelang ang shukata amat in tambo, ze katulozak. He was talking about Jesus. But how many of you know that everything that was said about Jesus, powerful as it was, the devil did not take it very seriously? Of course, the devil took it serious, but not very seriously. He actually started really taking it even more serious when it was now Jesus saying it about himself. Yeah, that's true. You know, you must notice when people hear things said about you, powerful things, they notice, but when they hear you declaring it over yourself, they start reacting. Others will say you are arrogant. You know, others will but you are you hearing me, Basalan? Why? Because the devil takes you serious when you start believing the word of God about yourself. When you start declaring it over your life. Are you hearing me, Basalan? That's why when I say you are a winner, you must receive it. Amen. But you must start saying it about yourself. Hallelujah. The reason why people like Paul were so powerful, Jesus was also powerful, was because Jesus became the incarnation of the word. The incarnation of the word. In other words, he became the living word. The word became flesh. So when you say, I'm blessed, when you say, I am blessed, when you say, I'm more than a conqueror, when you say, I am a winner, when you say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, that's when the devil takes you serious. Are you hearing me, Basar Nebam? Albon Kabalago, see, Usatana Wakala will react to much as at the Minang in the Nepkins on Okpila, Agako Sakbaba, and a part of the when Jesus said the spirit of the Lord is upon me he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor that's when the devil started scheming because when you start declaring something about yourself you are on your way to becoming the very thing that you declare hallelujah that's why for winners there's no room for timidity. There's no room for timidity. Hallelujah. 
I'm going to teach you about seven things that you must make sure. You must make sure because you are a part of the house of winners. There are seven things that must never escape your mind. Never escape your mind. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7. And I'm going to read from the Amplified, just one verse. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Get wisdom. For skillful and godly wisdom is the principal thing. With all you have gotten, get understanding or discernment or comprehension or interpretation. Get wisdom. Get wisdom. Basalon, turn in fundis. Basalon, bam, turn in fundis. The Bible says, by wisdom, a house is built. Anything of value, anything that will outlive you, turn in fundis. It takes more than power to build something of value. Power will open doors. Power will open heavens. Power will break and remove obstacles. But it will not build anything. Amen. Great nations are built through wisdom. In fact, when you study, if you're a student of history, you will know that after World War II, countries like Japan were in ashes. Singapore was in ashes. Germany was in ashes. You know, there were many other countries that had military prowess more than these countries. But for these countries to become first world, it took more than power, more than a gun. It took wisdom. Israel enjoyed peace when we talk about the glorious days of israel you are talking about two kings two kings ushered israel to its glorious days one of them was david the other was solomon two things two kings when you study their lives these kings were powerful in war powerful in battle but they were the wisest kings that israel ever had this thing must grow. Now you tinta foot this thing must work. Hallelujah. You know we are a church of power. We are the church of the supernatural. We are the church of deliverance and healing. We are a church of breakthrough. Because of that, to use the power God has given us will take wisdom. Wise people build. One of the things we are praying for in our nation today is that God will raise young kids who can think. Young men who can think. Young women who can think. No, Kulumani Bo, Tanin and Fondes. I can tell you now, you know, God has given me a privilege to travel. Of course, I've not traveled like others, but He has given me a little privilege to travel and see. And I'm a student of leadership. Because I'm a student of leadership, I'm very observant. And one of the things I can tell you now, I can tell you now, the African church is a praying church. In fact, Christianity is growing fast in, in Africa, Latin America, and as well as in Asia. We pray, we heal, but one of the things that I think is lacking that we must do is raise thinkers. Touch yourself like this and say, I must think. God must give me wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom is the application of knowledge. 
is not knowledge. It's the application of knowledge. Ability to apply what you know. Are you hearing me? Because when you know, but you can't, you don't know how to apply what you know. You don't go far. But wisdom also is the ability to apply what television show. You must seek more wisdom. Then in fact, you must ask for more wisdom and apply more wisdom. Then you read your, first, your friend's post on Facebook. More wisdom. Jesus in Luke chapter 2 verse 52. That verse summarizes the life of Jesus in one line. After Jesus was born, then the Bible is quiet about Jesus. Then when it comes back, it summarizes his life. This is what Luke says, Dr. Luke says. He says, then Jesus grew in wisdom. Amen. Barcelona, a church filled with wise people is a powerful church. Because it means what you are taught here, what you learn in your scriptures, what you get through revelation, what you get in prayer, you are able to apply in your daily life. Then you are wise. I bang kamalagosi. Hallelujah. Then you are wise. Wisdom is ability to apply what you know. You acquire knowledge, but ability to apply it is wisdom. Hallelujah. So winners are wise people. Ability to think and act using the knowledge you have and experience you have. I like some, uh, when I read a book some time ago, and this author said, wisdom is ability to apply insight in your daily living. Insight. Are you hearing me, Basalwan? Solomon ushered Israel to its glorious years. During his time, the Bible tells us, it says, Solomon lived in peace with all his neighbors. And during that time, every man sat under their fig tree. Because they were at peace with everybody. This man had ability to deal with problems even before they reached his people. Are you hearing me? This man had ability to resolve problems even before they arrived in Israel. So says the Queen of Sheba. When the Queen of Sheba arrives, she says, Wisdom. Everybody say, I must think. This thing must grow. It means I must have knowledge, but I must have ability to apply what I know. James chapter 4 verse 2 says, it says, actually James chapter 1 verse 5, let me start with verse 5 of chapter 1. If any of you is deficient in wisdom, let him ask of the giving God who gives to everyone liberally and ungrudgingly without fault finding and it will be given to him the next level of this ministry the next level of your ministry of your of your business your career is going to demand you to act speak walk wisely then he says grant your servant wisdom it's important to desire spiritual gifts it's important to desire spiritual office. But I can assure you this. If you carry great anointing without wisdom, the very anointing destroys you. Again, if you carry great skill without wisdom, 
or great knowledge without wisdom. That very knowledge puffs you up. So says Paul in Corinthians. But I've prayed before I came here. And this is what God has given me as a word for you. He will increase your wisdom. He will enlarge your wisdom. He will enlarge your capacity to make decisions. You will shock yourself on the ability of problems you'll be able to solve. You are wiser than your peers, actually. You are wiser than your friends. In fact, let's speak like the Jewish, you know, the Jewish parents to their children. They will say this, you are even wiser than your teachers. You are wiser than your neighbors, my friend. Because you not only carry natural knowledge, but you also carry spiritual wisdom. My God is here to grant you ability to think beyond you have e beyond what you have ever thought before. Your capacity, the capacity of your mind, God will enlarge it in Jesus' name. He will give you creative ideas, but he will give you ability to execute those ideas. It's called wisdom. We don't want only dreamers. Dreaming is not enough, but we need executors. Ability to execute your dream. Ability to unfold your vision. Ability to build from scratch. Ability to know what to do, when to do, how to do, and how to do. In the name of Jesus. May God raise young girls who are wise. In Jesus' name. May God raise young boys who are wise. But in this season, even old men, God will grant them fresh wisdom. Are you hearing me, Basalan? Are you hearing me, Basalan? Hallelujah. I was teaching in the church, and this is what I told them. I said, the reason why... We need God to accelerate our wisdom. It's because he has called us in such a time as this. And now we find ourselves ministering in our African black communities. Do you know that, you know, studies have been shown that when you compare blacks, black ch children, as a nation, we are f five to six decades behind whites. We are decades behind. They own more land than we have. They occupy more senior posts than we do. They are richer than we are. Not because they are cleverer than us. Of course, that's history. We can do nothing about it. But God is not surprised by history. It happened in front of him. He was there when history happened. The same God who was there when history happened must accelerate our wisdom so that we are able to do much more much more for our children it must be five times ten times a hundredfold in the name of jesus if he did it with daniel he can do it with our children he made daniel a ten times wiser than the children of babylon my god i am here enan dangizoti he is raising young people he is raising old people he is raising young girls he is raising young boys who are 10 times wiser 100 times wiser in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus did you learn anything today did somebody learn anything today? Yes. Are you hearing me? Is somebody better now from what you have received in Jesus' name?